okay good day everyone this is the second part of our class 7 that we started yesterday uh, let me do a quick recap during class 6 we spinned up a second server that is uh, meant to act as a replica server meaning that it's going to replicate from the master server which is our primary domain controller such that everything we do on the primary domain controller it replicates on the replica server talk about your creating users your add s your DHCP your DNS you create files you create group you create organizational unit everything you do on the main domain controller it replicates on the secondary domain controller which is also our replica server and the essence of that is that should for any reason the primary server goes down the secondary server takes action immediately such that the client the users the customers does not have to bear the heat that oh the server is hanging they are not able to log in they are not able to do this and that all right and uh, like we said in that class also that in replication there are different strategies and the one we we engage in this one is the floating master server and what that means is the server is on active standby it is it can execute both read and write queries right and it only takes effect when the master server goes down okay so in a class a of yesterday the class 7a we were able to test if our adds replication worked all right initially we created user on the primary domain controller and we logged in into our secondary uh, domain controller we could not see our user at first time but when we shut down the two servers and we power them up again we saw it although in real life you don't shut down your servers except if uh, there is a crucial maintenance you want to do and before you do that you must have spinned up another one that will be working while you do any maintenance or whatever you need to do on the primary server and in this sense this is even the reason why you have replica servers all over in some situations they act as multi servers so that if for a reason a server goes down another one uh, fills in the gap like that so we were able to test adds replication in class 7a we power down our primary domain controller and we power the secondary domain controller and then we try to log in with a user id and password into the client machine and we were able to log in just to show us that the replica domain controller is working okay we also took that further by shutting down the two servers and we try to log in into the domain with the client and we were not able to because none of the domain servers were up it also shows us that what we did on the replica worked so we did two tests to confirm the replication of adds and then uh, we can move on from there so what i will encourage you to do as well is that do your own replication as well spin up another server rename it promote it to domain controller add it to the domain that you have created on the primary domain controller and then make it replicate from the primary domain controller and when you do this create user 
on the primary domain controller C if we are able to see the user on the secondary the replica domain controller power down your primary domain controller login into your client machine with one of the users on the domain and see if we are able to if we are able to that means a replica domain controller has taken effect the moment your primary domain controller went down right so today in the class b of uh in the b part of this class seven we're going to be looking at two things today we're going to uh continue with replication what we did initially was for adds so in this class we're going to do for dhcp and dns right so i have powered my two servers both uh, the primary domain controller and the secondary domain controller and that's where we're going to be working from today we're going to begin with the primary domain controller what we want to do is to check to configure dhcp and also to configure dns so this is our class note we'll follow it i'm going to release the class notes for us at the end of this uh, module so it can serve as a backup for you but in real sense i encourage that you watch the video all the class videos and make your own note how you will understand it all right i encourage you to watch video rather than following class notes because when you watch the video you see it and then you do your own laps while you are doing your own and so on you can form your class notes so here we are dhcp replication since the task of DHCP is to assign IP address automatically to devices on the network, this is where we will tell DHCP on the primary domain controller to assign IP address within the block to client on the network. Alright, so we are going to begin from the domain controller. Let's go to our domain controller. DHCP is where we want to work. Remember we have a uh, before we could see DHCP, we had already promoted this server to become a domain controller. Alright. We come to tools and then we scroll down to DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. That's what DHCP means. And when your DHCP comes up, I would advise that you pin it that you pin it to your task bar because you are going to be working with it we are waiting for our DHCP to come up now Okay, see it here. Our DHCP is on. Look at DHCP here. You expand the domain. This is the domain server. You expand it. Alright. Our concern is with IP version 4. You expand that as well. IP version 4. Notice right click on IP version 4 P 
pick a new scope and say next let's go and do that IP version 4 you right click on it new scope All right so new scope means we want to define an assignment for the DHCP on this server on this domain to work with next so what's the name we want to give this new scope let's call it i10 dhcp what the description let's say protocol for all i10 trainees next so it's saying you define the scope address range by identifying a set of consecutive IP addresses so for the network guys this is where they come and then when they are configuring DHCP for your server this is what they, this is where they come where they define IP address range and you that you are the administrator they now tell you okay so within your office your enterprise this is the range of ip address we have defined on the domain for you all right so this is within the range that you're going to work with all right so let's speak remember we've been using 192 so it must be within that period start from one 192 168 100 to let's see 100 yeah you notice that again the moment you put 192 the subnet mask knows that this ip address is class a ip address all right say next and now says add exclusion and delay so within this range of 100 to 100 do you have IP address within that range that you don't want DHCP to assign of course we have you must have IP address that are static for some special machine all right like your router the IP address on your router should be static your gateway IP address if it is not configured on your router should be static for one reason or another you might want to separate uh, your web server from your domain controller your web server IP address too should be static static means they don't change they cannot be reassigned once you have it for that particular server or device it is there and that's because it is a crucial component of your network so for this uh, training purpose let's tell DHCP that okay from 1 to 10 I don't want it to be assigned or oh, let's say from 1 to 15 okay then we'll say add all right subnet delay in milliseconds you don't need that but let's refer to our note okay so let's see see what they say by exclusion here exclusion means if there is a specific ip address or range of address you want the protocol to leave while assigning addresses like i said example of ip address for web server for router for gateway should all be reserved okay and for this training let's reserve 1 to 15 oh excellent so next thing is uh we move ahead to say next all right list duration the list duration specify how long a client can use an ip address from this scope okay so let me do a brief explanation here for those of you in those days when you when we used to have cybercaf cafe right some of you you have your personal laptop you take it to the cafe to
to browse you don't want to use their own uh, desktop whatever they are using there okay and when you get to the cyber calf, there's a special table for people with their personal laptops to use and you have cables on them on those table the ip address that comes with those cable they are dynamic ip addresses and for the network people this is where they assign how many days can your laptop carry the ip address so the moment you set up your laptop and you plug in the LAN cable it automatically registered your system with an IP address on that network so that your 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 personal computer is able to receive packets from the web server from the ISP on that network of that network right so that is listen and what that says is it has leased to you eight days so after eight days it withdraws the ip address from that pc and it can reassign you you can reassign it if you come to that cafe again you plug in that cable you will still be able to browse but it is not the same ip address that you had eight days ago is what you are having now all right for some organization they leave it at one all right all right so after one day you cannot hold the ip address it gives it to another person all right or he withdraws it from if you're not that person he still withdraws it from you okay so yeah you have not noticed this because you are not a networking person so you wouldn't know all right but those that are used to use a vpn those that do funny things on the internet okay they know about this because they don't want them to trace where they are coming from so they will observe that the ip address that was on their pc assigned by the by that network two days ago is not the same one they have today they, they have a way of masking it all right so that the web pages they are browsing will not be able to read the ip address okay by now i hope you know that from ip address you can know the country which a person is connecting from okay so we we'll say lease it for eight days after eight days please withdraw our ip address from us okay the same thing in uh, organizations okay so assuming you work we always use bank as a analogy assuming you work in bank right and uh, although i'm not sure if banks allows you to use your personal laptop but for any reason you bring your laptop to bank as a staff to work right and they give you a LAN cable or even a wireless connection there is an IP address assigned to the your device at that point in time and it is for lease okay your device does not take it and hold it for life no it is for lease for social number of this after this number of this DHCP withdraws the ip address it keeps it to itself or if there's any other person that needs you might assign it or whatever so this is what you see here the lease duration specify how long the client can use an ip address within that scope okay so here you have to configure the most common dcb options before clients can use this scope okay so yes i want to configure these options we we'll say next all right router gateway you can specify the router or default gateway to be distributed by this so by default your gateway is always one all right and that's why we specified the exclusion i want between range of 1 to 15. you add it for router okay you move ahead again so here it says you domain name and dns server the domain name system maps and translate domain names used by a client okay so what do we do we already have a domain name here though it's called what does it want to what does to do to configure scope to use dns server on your network 
enter the IP addresses for those servers. I'm not sure we need to do anything here because uh, we are still going to configure DNS separately. So we already have DNS 20. Okay, so the 20 we have here, did anybody can anybody recall? The 20 we have here is our primary domain controller IP. I remember when we were configuring that server manually, we said that if you are looking for anything, look within this same server to resolve any domain name system issue. Okay, and that's why automatically you find 192.168.100.20 here all right this was what we defined on that dns server that's okay so look inward and that's why you see it here automatically uh there you see next when server has nothing to do don't bother yourself you see next and then do you want to activate this scope now of course yes and uh finish so we have successfully configured DHCP on this server. All right, we configured DHCP that between the block of 192.168.101 to 192.168.100, assign IP addresses within that block for which people for itan trainers all right so let us move ahead i hope uh, you're following okay so here it says in production environment dhcp should be configured once a server is promoted to domain controller this will enable automatic assigning of ip addresses to clients when they are added to the domain of course yes we've done that so now we want to configure failover what is failover dhcp failover enables two dhcp servers to share service availability information with each other providing dhcp high availability DHCP failover works by replicating IP address leases and settings in one or more DHCP scopes from a primary DHCP server to a failover partner server. Okay, so what we are seeing here is that you configure DHCP. Remember, we said that what DHCP does is automatically assign IP addresses to clients on the network on the domain now failover is a situation whereby the dhcp server they share information between two servers which is what two or more servers actually between the master server where the dhcp is and failover servers we call them replica servers in this class okay and for this training we have just one replica server so what it's saying is that in case of something happens which this master dhcp right replicate it on the second server so in case this one is not able to do what we need it to do the second server is going to go ahead and assign it all right so remember what we did initially on a replica server was to uh, configure ADDS to be able to replicate. We have not done for DHCP, and this is where the real work for DHCP configuration begins. What we defined initially was scope of DHCP. All right, so we say for UBA bank, pick. IP address between 192.168.100.1 to 192.168.100.100. All right. So now we've defined the scope. 
what you want to do now is to now configure failover for that scope all right let's move ahead all scope information is shared between two dhcp servers including active leases this enables either dhcp server to assume responsibility for dhcp client if one if the other server becomes unavailable all right that is what we have explained if one of the server becomes unavailable so let us go and configure failover now we come to our dhcp window again you right click come in let me double show that ip configure failover okay we are now working with uh, you right click on uh, ip version 4 here and you see you come down to configure failover so this is a failover window configuration let's move ahead next so provide the host name ip address of the partner server with which failover should be configured i've explained that here while preparing the note saying that add server all right that means to enter the server ip with which the failover should be what should be configured so let's put uh we're gonna put the ip address of our replica server now okay let's use add server okay look at it add server this is the right dhcp server i want you to use this say okay okay this server is actually the second server which is our replica server all right remember this ip address is for our replica server right it has been added here successfully i can server to say next right so the next window is create a new failover relationship a new failover relationship i've explained here as well what it means the failover relationship mode can either be load balancing or hot standby let me show us that the mode here yes, is what they are referring to it can either be two load balance or hot standby load balance means that both the master server and the replica server they are working at the same time all right and they are sharing the load on the dhcp okay so for companies like glow they cannot be using hot standby if they have replica servers what do we use them for is load balance so that one dhcp will not be overwhelmed right but for this sake I think what we are going to do is to configure it to hot standby. Hot standby means that take effect the moment the master server goes down. And that makes sense. Why? The strategy we use for our replica server is a floating master server, which means that it's going to remain inactive as long as the master server is active all right so imagine if we configure the replica server to be inactive as long as the master server is active and we now put it on load balancing how will a server that is not active be able to balance with the other server you know that will not happen so it is hot standby hot standby means that stay on hold standby hot standby means remain very ready set to go at any time you can be called to come and function all right so
to load balance both servers work concurrently sharing the DHCP task or hot standby means that the secondary domain controller takes effect immediately the primary domain controller is done we drop it down to hot standby we check okay let's go and work now check state switch over interval all right switch over interval here remember i also talked about this in class uh, when we were configuring uh, when we were talking about a uh, replication it means that after 60 minutes if the master DHCP server is not working. Remember, this is a not standby. Switch over to the replica immediately after 60 minutes. If we are not, we, we query the master server, nothing is coming from it. Switch over. So you check that. You enter admin password in the shared secret okay so here shared secret the password of of the admin only you know for for the classic we are using i 2021 exclamation mark you know what you are using for your own you see next so failover will be set up between i so it's telling us that this failover will be set up between Python domain controller and Python server 2 domain <laughs> controller. See, well, that's all we want. Finish. So it is in progress now. Everything we have done is successful. Right? Scope, disable scope, creation of failover, conversion on partner server, creation of failover, configuration on host server. Activate scopes on partner server, configure, failover, everything successful. You say close. Alright, so we have done that. What else do we need to do? Okay, so we go to the DHCP window, we right click on our domain name and we say authorize right let's go and do that here right click on the domain on the server you say authorize all right we have authorized what we've done authorize means everything we have configured let it take effect immediately what's next we right click on ip version 4 replicate full over scopes okay close refresh Okay, so right click. Oh, this is where we are working. Right click here. Replicate failover scope. So, what we did initially was to configure failover. No, the first thing we did was for define new scope for DHCP. That means we set the range of IP address within which the DHCP protocol will assign. Or will be assigning addresses after we done that we configured failover between two servers now we want to we've authorized that configuration here we now say replicate the failover scopes that means this what we configured here replicate it on the replica domain controller you see replicate so you now say this action will replicate the configuration of all failover scopes on this server to the, rep the, the representative partner servers. This separation may take some time. You don't mind. Why not continue? So if you read it carefully, what he's saying is the scope from zero to failover partner from this identical to failover everything is telling you is okay this is the range of the scope you set and even the exclusion that you set for that scope okay you say close so we've done the replication you can then say refresh dhcp by clicking on the refresh icon let me show you 
I know you already know see the refresh icon here so you come here and you refresh you notice that the servers here the symbol here initially was caution it has changed to okay meaning that work is going on or these servers are now these protocols are now active on the server item.com so next thing we want to do is let us test what we have done so, test, so before we test what we have done can we come to the replica domain controller and then see what we did on the primary domain controller if it has actually replicated here right this is our item server 2 this is the primary the secondary domain controller it is also the replica domain controller so we come to tools here From tools, we click on DHCP, the DHCP window. Because we're going to be working with it, you have to pin it to your taskbar. So once the window comes up now, I'm going to pin it to the taskbar. We're waiting for that. Okay, so this is our window for the DHCP. Like we did on the primary domain controller, you expand the server here as well. You expand and then, uh, yep. So the scope, can we click on the scope? If you click on the scope and come to address pool, exactly see our address pool all right remember that on the primary domain controller we set that the scope we set a scope on primary domain controller and then for that scope we say pick uh, be assigning ip address to clients on the domain within this range one to one hundred of these IP address you see it as replicated here and why we are setting that scope as well we also say that exclude 1 to 15 because we want to statically assign 1 to 15 to some devices one of which is our router our router on that network has picked one you might use your server to or other servers because servers should always have static IP address all right you can use from 1 to 15 so between this 1 to 100 this DHCP will not assign 1 to 15 because it has been what excluded so this is to confirm that this secondary domain controller our replica server is what is replicating from the primary domain controller all right so that is a uh, one thing another thing we can do is we can also check by setting a new configuration scope how do we do that you see let us test what we have done right so let us add a new exclusion range to see if it will replicate on the secondary domain controller All right so we go to our primary domain controller here we want to add a new exclusion range remember we have an exclusion range already okay and that exclusion range is 1 to 15 all right so we want to add another one just to also confirm if our replica server is what is replicating from the primary server and how do we do that okay 
expand domain expand ip version 4 expand scope click on address pool oh no this is how to see it here is expand ip version 4 right click on address pool new exclusion range okay well me i have done that already but for learning sake again when you clicked on tools and you click on dhcp this window came up right so you expand this the domain server you expand ip version 4 you expand scope this is where we are coming address pool if you right click on address pool you want to set a new exclusion range okay, just to confirm if what we have done is taking effect let's say from 192 168 100 <coughs> let us say between 70 and 75 I also want you to leave it for some set of people okay so we say add exclusion and then we close all right when we do that what do you do refresh when you refresh that server okay we can see close ip version for replicate oh well let's go and replicate it replicate fill over scope okay we close all right and then we come to the replica server here let's refresh it Paula. so you see after we refreshed another exclusion that we set say 192 168 to 70 70 to 75 has also was replicated so successfully we have been able to what to configure dhcp replication failover configuration is what we have done so this has been done successfully i want to encourage you to kindly kindly do your practice it looks easy because we are clicking it and it is answering you but it is not easy until you do yours until you do yours and you get it if you have any challenge come to the whatsapp page and i'll be standing by to help you the next thing is let us go and configure dns replication and to also test if it is working right dns compression and test if it is working all right dns replica configuration remember that our primary domain controller is also our dns server for the domain right because when we were promoting it we say that configure adds configure addc rather configure dhcp and also configure dns so now we need to remove the DNS service from the secondary domain controller and make it secondary DNS. All right, so because our DNS right now, what we have on our primary domain controller is the same thing as what we have on our secondary domain controller same dns but now that we have made secondary domain controller to replicate from the primary domain controller it must also be ready to replicate the dns on our primary domain controller and that's what we want to do from here such that when the primary domain controller is down the dns service on the secondary domain controller can also work take effect what dns does is that it has to resolve ip addresses with domain name okay so if you want to browse you type www.emanuela.com okay what enables you to access to type emanuela.com in your browser window and you return something for you is because there's a dns that is resolving that domain name 
imanina.com to an IP address of that web server. Alright. Otherwise, what many of us would have been typing when you want to access any server would have been IP addresses. 192 or 193 or 50 dot anything dot anything dot anything dot something all right but dns helps us to what so that an ip address is tied to a domain name all right so let us configure our dns as we did for addfs and dhcp we're going to begin from the primary domain controller and from there we walk uh, up so this is it we can uh, close this because we are done oh I thought I I thought I uh, pinned down but it's not an issue DNS is where we want to work now from tools again come to DNS from tools you come to DNS this is our DNS window and here this is your server you click on it and you expand it forward lookup zones is where we want to configure a scope okay let's check our note to be sure forward lookup zones right new zone you check primary zone and uncheck store the zone all right so i'll come back to explain this it is Anson. all right from forward lookup zone you right click on forward lookup zone and say new zone okay next so it says uncheck You check this, you check primary zone and you uncheck store the zone in active directory. Okay, you uncheck it. Let's get to the explanation there. Check primary zone. We made it checked already and uncheck store the zone in active directory. Why? Because DNS server we are configuring has same IP address as our primary domain controller remember when we were configuring our dhcp we got to a place where that window asked us do we want to we, that we should put ip address for the dns and we automatically saw 192.168.100.20 there right and i explained to us that it was because when we were configuring the primary domain controller we set our dns to the d our dns to bear the same ip address as that server we are making the domain controller okay and i want to explain that what that means is if you are looking for anywhere to resolve dns issue look inside yourself all right but now that we are trying to make DNS replicate from a replica server. Okay, we must not localize DNS to that primary domain controller. If we do that, if that server goes down, the DNS goes down with it. All right, but if we the the if we not if we do not localize i'm trying to use delocalize if that's correct if we delocalize our dns from that primary domain controller it means that everything that is happening in that primary domain controller we also happen on where we are replicating to which is our replica server the secondary domain controller and that also means that if the primary domain controller goes down with the dns the replica domain controller can what can pick up action and that's what we are going to do here so we say uncheck store the zone in active directory 
the reason is that dns we are configuring our same ip address as our pdc so we need to separate the functions okay functions of the two which is function the server and function as a domain controller all right remember that our primary domain controller is first a server before we promoted this to a domain controller all right so this means as dc this means that you remain as domain controller but don't tie the dns to yourself since we are going to introduce another server that you can replicate on that's it so let's move ahead we've done that so okay you can have it but don't store it so you uncheck this we say next what name do we want to call this what is the name of the new zone say just as we did for Python DNS just as we did for DHCP next okay, so do you want to create a new zone file as an existing okay we are creating we are creating a new zone file next so it says do not allow dynamic update i think i explained that here as well okay so do not allow at next check allow both non-secure and secure updates right to say allow both non-secure and secure let's see, read what is here it says dynamic updates of the resource records are recorded from any client okay so it means that if there's any update allow it next so this is a, a summary of what we have done here finish up okay we are done with that so the next thing is the zone that we just created you right click on it properties we use let's move let's go and check see the zone that we've just created right i think dns you right click see properties look at this host name aa alias these things you are doing here in windows when we get to aws if you still have the courage to proceed which i want to encourage you to ensure that you follow this whole light and training from beginning to the end the knowledge you will gain from it is uh, is massive and it will turn out to be a very good addition to your skills right especially now that the whole world is turning to technology it information technology and they are going into cloud right so i want you to note this this host a alias you're seeing here when we get to aws you're going to see it as well so we right click on the new server new zone uh, we just created right and dns you come to properties okay from properties you go to the zone transfers tab see it here. we come to the zone transfer tab what do we do at the zone transfer tab you check allow zone transfer only to the following server you check it right allow zone transfer only to the following server so it means a zone transfer sends a copy of the zone to the servers that request a copy so this zone right it means that it will replicate on wherever we want it to go okay so you can either set to any transfer to any server that means any server it meets on the domain it will transfer to them you can say only to server listed on the name server tabs all right or we can say this is the name server tabs okay and we have just one server there okay or we can say only to server only to the following servers which servers click on edit 
if you click on edit come to click here to add click here to add an IP address or DNS name so what IP address are we going to add IP address of our secondary domain controller 192.168.100.25 all right it is attempting to resolve it although it, it's saying caution here but it's not an issue let's move ahead it will still change it we say okay so it has resolved it it has brought the name of that server ITAN server 2 you say okay okay so it now says to specify secondary servers to be notified of zone update of zone update update click notify all right it says to specify secondary servers to be notified of zone update click notify so we come to notify right we'll check the following server and we again we'll put the ip of our secondary domain controller dot 100 dot 25 you click outside it will look at we look around give you time to resolve it let's go and check if our server okay this one has let's go back to work all right so one it confirms that this ip address is on the server it also confirms the name i turn server 2 so it means that notify this ip address when there's any change on that zone you say okay and when you are done you apply and you say okay so what we have done now is we have successfully transfer that zone okay ip address we've done all these things the next thing is we go to our secondary domain controllers tools enter zone ip address finish refresh boot server okay go to secondary domain controller tools so we have configured our primary domain controller let's go and configure our secondary domain controller as well let's go and do that this is our DHCP window that we still have here I want to close it but let me see if I can pin it yeah so uh, let me close it now so we want to set up our dns here as well what do we do from tools just as we did tools we come to dns I would like to say again please I'm pleading with you do your practice ensure you do your labs you do not know it until you practice it looks easy while we do it in class but it is not truly easy until you do it and get it okay so we are here our DNS manager the window is up this is our Python server 2 right remember it is forward look zone that we are clicking on you right click okay new zone see it here from the secondary domain controller tools DNS ex expand domain controller right click forward to new zones to new zones here we are going to check secondary zone remember here we checked primary 
let me show us we checked primary zone because that's our primary domain controller all right and then we uncheck that part where it says make active store the zone in active directory okay so to complete that replication configuration we'll come to the secondary zone create new zone on the forward lookup but make it a secondary zone all right so let's continue say next at this point what do we pick secondary zone it is no longer our primary zone we say next zone name this zone name is not a new zone name the same zone we created on our primary domain controller and that's item dns all right you see next okay see secondary zone is copied from one or more dns servers specify the dns servers from which you want to copy the zone servers are contacted in the other shown so what do we put here now we put the ip address of the primary dns 192.168.100.20 right, so this is where it's going to be replicating from all right you see it has seen it it's trying to attempt to resolve that server name we we'll take our time all right that has happened item domain controller say next and finish so you see we didn't have this here before it is here now it is here now so let's go to our note enter the zone name of master dns enter the ip address finish so we've done that so the next thing is to refresh both servers if we refresh both servers we can now test if dns replication is working so what do we do here refresh this server this D dns rather we are refreshing dns we are not refresh we are not refreshing server this is where you refresh if you need to refresh the old server it is here okay so we've done that refresh next thing now is let us now check if our dns is working okay how do we check that we come here and actually create a new host we create a new host and we confirm if that new host will replicate on our primary domain our secondary domain controller rather okay so to test dns replication is working from the primary domain controller expand the dc server expand look up forward right click on right click on here and say create right okay right click on the zone that we created and pick host name a so let's go and do that and check that was already here so here right click and host name like i said earlier look at this when we get to aws and you are dealing with dns you will also see this that time you will appreciate it better so host name so we want to do name uses okay name uses parent domain name if blank all right so because this one will form name from the parent domain name let's just say let's call it schedule 5 all right see how it's going to pick it and then we're going to assign ip address to it within the range of 1 to 100 that we set on our dhcp call it 192.168.100 let's pick 
28 and the same add host the host record schedule 5.ipan dns was successfully created say ok and done let's come here to check add host done what do we do next let us refresh here see the host name that we just the host we just created so let's come to our secondary domain controller and refresh browser it has what which is also here so people we have successfully configured dns and we tested it if it is working so right now this server is being replicated on this server so should anything happen to this server now this server can take over all right and that is now what will take me to the next thing let me see the time we've done one uh, six minutes next thing we want to discuss talk about snapshots cloning and backup replication is not the same as backup so because i said this server now for adds i'm coming for adds dxcp and dns this domain controller is being replicated on secondary domain controller it doesn't mean that there is a backup on it all right so if i create a looker file here you know this is the server i can come here create a looker file for something that looker file is not going to be here because the looker file just as the name implies it is located to that server not on the domain all right what is replicating here is activities on the domain because it is your domain that interact with other users within that network okay so please don't call replica backup there is the difference when we want to talk about backup of a server backup of a server then you were you're talking about <coughs> excuse me backup of the server you're talking about either snapshot clone or backup all right and then uh in our class tonight i'm going to show you that this is what we're going to be treating so i've successfully explained how we can do replica how we can make our server replicate okay for adds dhcp and dns again i'm going to plead with us please please and please so that the essence of this training will not be defeated you only know the reason why you've come for this training i can only encourage you the knowledge is worth it but you can only make the knowledge worthy if you do your own labs get on your computer do these things we are learning we are building on it little by little i know all of you are working class and i know time could be a constraint but i know there's a reason why you signed up for this course don't let that reason be defeated please find time it's just a five to six month course all right so set set your heart to it that in this period i will devote it i will inconvenience myself i'll sacrifice if it is your sleeping time or if it is part part time from the family time to know this and then the knowledge we pay off okay someone was sharing with us in class of how his friend just got a job 
$210,000 per annum in Chicago. All right. That friend did not bring the knowledge from heaven. At the point in time, the friend had settled down to learn DevOps. And you are on your path to also learning DevOps. But we, are, we need to build from the scratch up so that when you see this thing being automated, you will know how the autom you appreciate the automation properly. That's how we are doing it in Windows. Okay, when you get to AWS, it is, it is majorly click of buttons. But you must at first know the back end knowledge of these things. So in case you need to tweak, you know what and what you are tweaking. All right. So the summary is: please, guys, find time, sacrifice time, do your labs, do your practices, please. All right. We we'll meet in class tonight, and I hope that uh, the story this time will be: oh, I've done this, I've done this. This is what I challenge. This is what the challenges I faced. I resolved it. The one I can resolve, we'll do it together. Okay. Alright, guys. Bye. Thank you.